Many thanks to my awesome patrons and fine tool partners. If you're looking for some free stuff and want some early access, consider becoming a patron today. Let's make a bifold gate. Boom! That's right, you heard me, a bifold gate. Not only that, but I get to break in a new tool while I make it. So if this is your first time here, I want to welcome you. Please be sure and click the subscribe button and don't forget to click that notification bell so you know each and every time that I post brand new content. So I've got a gate that's in my backyard right now that is kind of like one of those automotive gates that is wide enough to accept uh, vehicles through. But I made it about six or seven years ago and it's very rickety now. It's sagging a lot. Not to mention the ground has kind of changed a little bit underneath it. So whenever I go to open it, um, the planks want to drag the ground real bad. Not to mention any time that you have those really wide gates like that, it pulls a lot on those hinges and the hinges are basically trying to back themselves out and basically drop the gate off wherever it wants to. So I'm going to replace it and I want to make a gate that has uh, less stress on the hinges, uh, the main hinges that attaches to the fence. Uh, so I'm going to make it bifold and in that center section, not only will it have a locking pin, but we'll have a wheel that will take some of the stress off of those hinges and allow it to travel along the ground without me having to pick it up and walk it back. I'm just going to start by making all of my cuts for the lengths and the X brace areas, I'm going to leave oversized and I'll cut those to length Just later. looking at this lumber, it looks pretty straight and um, relatively it is, but for joinery purposes, it's not. <laughs> I want to make sure that these joints fit nice and snug so the settling amount will be kept down to a minimum. I don't want any amount of play in these joints where they can move. Uh, so one thing I will do before I run these through with joinery is to take them to the table saw with a standard blade and just clean off uh, both edges very, very minimally. Um, it'll just take off, you know, just slivers on both sides. Uh, that won't affect my design because the interior dimensions, the only thing I have to worry about are the cross members that make the X brace. Those are going to get cut last uh, to fit the space. To establish the joinery on the exact center of all of these uprights that are going to be establishing the edges of the frames, I've got to make sure that they are all symmetrical for the joinery to line up just right. So I've got them pushed right up against my fence as a stop block, and then I've taken one of the pieces, cutoffs, just to kind of get an idea of where the uh, edge of the board needs to be, and I've made a mark. Then I took my straight edge and just made a continuous line all the way down the center. And then I've also put little arrows pointing to the fence so I can make sure that each time that I cut one of these, I establish the same end to the fence so I can make sure that they all do line up when I'm done. I'm first going to start off by making the borders of all of the half laps. So I'm just gonna establish that using a flat bottom grind blade, just a standard saw blade with all the teeth being flat on the very top. So I need to establish the height of the blade and the easiest way to do that I've found with experience is just taking a, excuse me, taking a piece uh, that's just a cutoff of what we've been using. So I'm going to use this as a gauge. So I'll run it through once, flip the piece over, run it through again and see how much is left. Then I'll raise the blade up just a little, run it through, flip it, run it through until I remove the waste material uh, at the very, very center of the board. Once I've done that, I know I've established half, at least for this piece. Now with that established, I can go ahead and make all of my perimeter cuts for every single half lap joint.
Now before I make the pieces that are gonna go into the center portions uh, to make my cross members for the X brace, I've cut these 45 degree shorties that go in each corner which also help resist the uh, racking of the door. Now the way these gates are made currently are pretty strong, but I want to add a little bit more stability in the corners that don't have any braces like these do. So I've got a piece that's roughly about 35 inches long, which is overcut. I did that on purpose. So I can cut this to fit the opening. What I did to start off with is I found the center or as close to center as possible of each board on both ends. Then I made an extended line mark that's roughly about five inches long uh, to make sure that I have enough visible marking that I can see once this is placed under the panel. So let me show you what it's going to be used for. So these center lines will give me a point of reference as I place it underneath. So I'm going to lift up the panel and put it underneath and that center line lines up with the exact corner of the gate. I want to do the same thing on this end to make sure that it sits nice and flat and that way I can mark both at the same time. So just take it over to your miter saw and then just cut the scribed angle making sure to leave the line. So the installation of the hinges once you have the uh, frames made is pretty simple. I just located one in the center and then I put the other two where I wanted. Uh, you can mortise these in if you choose to, but I chose not to. That way it gives me a good quarter inch gap uh, because of the wood movement I'm gonna have over time with these things being outside. Um, I use two inch screws instead of the ones that are standard that come with it and these are Power Pro screws. They're number eight by two inches long. Now the location of the hardware you can put just about anywhere you want. I did want a locking pin on the first section and I will be putting one on the uh, other two sections because this is going to be the main door that I want to open and shut. Now the wheel location you want to try and find the lowest part uh, when the gate is at rest and work it up the highest part but the thing is is that this gate is going to stay closed most of the time so the wheel is going to have to do a lot of load bear um, just to make sure that it doesn't sag over time. So shut the gate and install the wheel where you like. So one of the big obstacles that I have with this fence is that it goes downhill pretty far. And if I was to put all the planks side by side without accounting for the slope, it wouldn't look that great. So I have taken a piece of string right here and I have wrapped it around a nail and put one over here on the other plank at the other end of the fence on both sides of the gate. That will give me a line of sight, almost like a chalk line, to uh, snap all of these planks in a gradual fashion instead of a straight and then drop down. So I can create that slope and it won't be so displeasing to the eye. So because all these planks require uh, trimming at the very bottom, the easiest way to measure for that rather than use a tape measure is to take the plank, turn it upside down, run it underneath your string, make it pretty well even with the bottom of the other plank. And while holding it in place, just open the gate. So it clears there. Now I have to make sure it clears this way. And it looks like it does. Now with the gate shut, Just marking the center of the panel where the string is at. Okay, I'll just put the panel right up to the string where it's even with the center of the plank. Separate it out about a quarter of an inch away and pop one nail in. Next, I usually just come back down to the bottom and then just eyeball the gap. You can use a level for plumb if you want to, but I know that a lot of these aren't plumb and they're not straight either, so I just go by eye. Then pop another nail in. Then you can finish it off. So if you're curious what I'm using to put these planks in place, I actually just acquired this tool and it's the 18 volt Milwaukee Fuel 30 to 34 degree framing nailer. 
There's a couple features I like about this gun too, is that not only is it battery operated with power indicators on the back side, but it has mode selections to where you can use single fire or multi-fire and turn the power on and off when you're not using it so you can make sure that you're not draining the battery inadvertently. Another thing that I noticed today is that most guns, whenever you use them, when you run dry or no more nails, it will keep firing regardless and you don't know it until it's too late. This one with about four nails left in the coil or magazine will stop firing and won't let you shoot anymore until you load some more nails in. That way you can make sure that you always have a nail in your project and uh, never run out without knowing it. If you're curious where you can pick one of these bad boys up, I have a link down in the description below of this video at Home Depot and I have a link to one more tool that you might find interesting as well might try one of these out for yourself. Now one of the major design details I love about this fence is because it opens towards the inside with the planks on the outside and not the opposite way, um, it allows me to be able to lay these planks one next to the other next to the other without having to worry about where the joints of the gates are because if since it opens the inside, even if there's a plank that overlaps one of the joints, it's either going to stay put or open inward with the gate itself. And then when you shut the gate, it will just overlap and be right up next to the plank that it was originally. And that way it looks like a gate was never there. Now a problem I'm going to run into with the joinery of this gate is the next plank is going to be overlapping the main part of the split of the gate. So what I'm going to do to fix that problem is I'm going to make a cutout to go around this latch. So to do that, just set it in place roughly close to your line up there. Then just take your pin and make a mark above the latch and below the latch. Now take your piece above and put the bottom up against the latch. Kind of move it where it's like it's gonna be in place. Then make a mark on the left and right side of the latch, leaving yourself a small little slit that this thing is going to fit through. Now using the lines I put at the bottom, I'm going to transfer those here onto the plank, which is 46 and 46 and 3 quarter. Do the same at the bottom line, 46, 46 and 3 quarter, then just connect the dots. Now I'm just going to use a Forstner bit and put two holes at either end of that opening. Then just finish the cut with a jigsaw. So now I've got this particular fence plank in place and the handle is able to slide right through it and still open and shut the gate. But cool part is when you shut it, you can't see the gap between the two pieces. So this looks like one solid panel, except for this little bitty thing sticking right out the front. So a lot of the hardware that I use for this fence build, you can find on my Amazon store. The wheels are spring loaded, that way they are able to go over any terrain that the uh, gate happens to go across. The pins are the 3 8 inch diameter uh, drop pins or gate pins that keep the gate locked in place whenever it's not in use. The hinges, again, through my Amazon store, I'll leave a link in the description for both the wheels and the hinges down below. As far as screwing in those uh, cross members, if I didn't get it on film, I've had a few people ask, they are all toenailed in with two inch long Power Pro hardware star drive screws. I use the number eight head because it's a little bit smaller, but a lot of this stuff has glue on it. I slathered a lot on, but the screws are there just to keep everything secure uh, while the glue set. So I hope you guys found the build process of this bifold gate system entertaining and hopefully you're able to draw some ideas for this for a future build of your own. And if you have any comments, tips, or suggestions that you want to add, be sure and throw them down below. You can check out all of my prior videos and uh, SketchUp tutorials over there. Don't forget, hit that subscribed circle that you see in the center of the screen, and I will talk to you later. Many thanks to my patrons and tool supporters, and I'll see you next time. Boom!